Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be all about Pat McGrath's opalescent orchid quad. I'm going to be sharing all of my thoughts, swatches, all of the information you need, as well as showing you how I got this stunning look with this little quad. So if you're interested in all of my thoughts on it, then keep watching. Okay, so let me tell you. <sighs> This has been a controversial little launch from Pat McGrath, hasn't it? Very divisive, okay? I've seen a lot of reactions when she first announced this collection of the two eyeshadow quads. Very mixed responses. A lot of people were like, yes, something different. We've got something that's not just pink. We've got some beautiful shades in there, very exciting. And then there were a lot of people saying this was just not for them. I don't know what this is. We don't like the cardboard packaging. A lot of people were just not excited about it. I didn't care about the other quad, okay? She doesn't exist to me. I had no interest in in that that was very much uh done and done and done again color story from pat mcgrath so i wasn't at all interested in nirvana nectar but when i saw opalescent orchid i was super excited i'm not a colorful makeup or eyeshadow kind of girl but this really spoke to me, especially this shade. I felt like it was so pretty. I could really envision this kind of look that I got today out of it. And I was just excited to see something pretty and different. But when this palette arrived, and it arrived within a week from Pat McGrath's website, which is very unusual for UK-based customers, it was very quick on the delivery. So I was really excited about that. And I posted my swatches to my Instagram and it seems super controversial, this quad. I wasn't expecting it at all. And it seems like a lot of people really have a lot of hatred towards it. And I understand a lot of it when it comes to the price point. So we do have the cardboard packaging. Costs a lot less to use. Therefore, we should see a lower price point for a cardboard packaging quad versus the heavier, more luxurious plastic packaging that Pat McGrath typically does with her quads. There should be, you know, a fairly decent price point difference between these two because this is much thinner, flimsier, easier to break, less expensive to use. So therefore we should be getting a discount. There is then only four grams of product in here and it is the US formula. Whereas in, this is Voyeuristic Vixen, we have 4.9, so almost a gram more of product. And this is the Italian made formula. So a lot more expensive to make this than this and yes there is a price difference so this is 43 pounds and then the usual cords in the standard packaging or the luxury packaging from Italy are usually 55 pounds so there is a price difference I guess the argument comes down to whether 12 pounds is enough of a price difference should this have been lower I probably agree that it should I think it should have been maybe 10 pounds cheaper but I think if it had been like £35, people would have been happier with that price point, with the cardboard packaging, with the US formula, with the smaller amount of product, I think that would have felt better. I think it's too close in price, given the number of differences in value between these two, I think the price difference isn't enough. I think it should have been lower and I totally understand people's frustration when it came to the price point and all of the sort of luxury touches that are missing, the luxury mirror, the luxury heavy duty plastic packaging, the superior Italian formula, the amount of product. Is it worth £43? I think not. I think it should have been £35 or lower. But let's have a look at it and have a look at some swatches. And we have four shades. All varying amounts of shimmer. This fuchsia set shade is a bit more of a satin. So there you have the four shades and that's one sort of swirl in each pan on bare skin, no primer, no nothing like that. The sort of opalescent or pearlescent shade, that white, is quite sheer. It's more of a sort of a shimmer 
topper and then we have these two beautiful shimmers the lilac and the green and then as I said this pink is like more of a satin and nowhere near as scary and as intimidating as I thought it was going to be for a pink hater so I thought on first impression with the swatches this is going to be much more wearable for me than I maybe expected it to be as a whole quad I thought I'm going to use the, these shades probably on their own bit of a one and done bit of you know mix and matching but actually having seen the four swatches I think I'm going to get on better with it as a all around look the four shadows used together so that was positive surprise for me a pleasant surprise I should have said okay so that is all the information on this quad that you need let's jump into the tutorial okay so I think when I just use this day to day I will most likely use this as sort of one and done maybe a couple of shadows today because I'm here with you guys I am going to try and use all four shadows so you can see them all on my eyes and we can see how they all perform but just know this is probably not how I would use this if I was just using it for my own self. I'd probably use these two together. Maybe I'll just tap this onto the lids for a sort of one and done bit of glisten. This is probably gonna be my least favorite shade because it is very pink and you know how I feel about pink. But for science today, we're going to use all of them. So I'm going to use my Sonia G Holiday Big Fluffy Brush and a bit of that pink. And I'm going to proceed with caution quite lightly. It's not super pigmented, this pink, which is good for me because I don't want this eyeshadow look to like be intensely pink. <laughs> the less pink, the better. But if you were wanting it to sort of look on the lid as it does in the pan, it's definitely softer and more subtle. It's not super pigmented as far as that really vibrant pink color, which for me is fantastic. But obviously if you are wanting that, it's not great. I'm just building this up. It's blending beautifully and it's super smooth and it's definitely got some sort of buildable quality to it. It's not like it's got no pigmentation. It's building quite nicely. And that's making it, I think for me, a lot more wearable than I, I thought this palette would be because I just thought that was gonna be a really intense fuchsia that I was really not going to want to use. But it's actually giving me a much nicer sort of transitional shade than I thought was going to be in this palette because I just, I don't, I'm not a fuchsia girl. I won't lie to you, ever. Got a lovely sheen, that shadow actually. Really pretty. Yeah, really enjoying that shade. Much more than I thought I would. Blended nicely, much softer than I thought it would be. If you're looking for a really intense, vibrant fuchsia, she's not here, she does not live here, okay? She's out for the day. If you're looking for something softer, more forgiving, and more subtle, this is your girl. Okay, so now I'm going to use my Sonia T2. It's kind of a like chonky flat brush and I'm going to dip into this lilac shade and see how we get on with this shade. Well, that's very pretty, very pretty. By the way, my lids were primed with concealer and powder today, so not an eyeshadow primer that might add to the intensity of these shadows or anything like that. It's literally concealer with powder, which I know Robert Welsh will be absolutely furious with me, but that is just what I find easiest to blend into. I'm not a professional. I need the help, you know. I need the help. I need a soft, powdered base. I can't cope with an actual eye primer, I'm just useless. Okay, so again, a really pretty, but softer, not super intense shadow, I think. This is definitely gonna be a bit more wearable and user-friendly than you might think to look at the color story because the shadows are a bit softer, more muted than a typical Pat McGrath shadow, but I think they're super pretty. Okay, so now for the moment I certainly have been waiting for is this green. I'm going to use my Refa 
21 flat brush for this little number and I'm going to focus this towards the front of my lid. <gasps> this is very pretty. Again, nowhere near as intense and intimidating and frightening as it may look in the pan. I definitely got a fair bit of fallout from the lilac shade. Not as much from this green, maybe a little bit, but not too much. Again, I'm just slightly building that up. That's really pretty, really pretty. I think the fuchsia sort of satin shade not being really intensely pigmented has actually really helped me like this palette more than I would have because this is just a much prettier look and I thought it was going to be overwhelmingly pink because that is sort of the shade that I would always use as a base colour. Okay and I'm sticking with that same brush and dipping into this gorgeous frosty little number here and I'm just going to pop that Right in my inner corner, it's going to be a pretty frosty shade there. Oh, that's pretty as well. I definitely want to use that, like just a light dusting of that on my lid with some bronzer in the crease. I think that would be super pretty as well. Okay, so this is the look with no other makeup and before mascara. I'm really happy with it. I feel like it's pretty, but it's wearable at the same time. And I thought I wasn't gonna like this look today because I was going to use all four shadows and that's just not what I would usually do with a palette as colorful as this, but I feel like a mermaid. I feel like it's really pretty and colorful, but in a muted, wearable way. Let's put mascara on. Charlotte Tilbury, of course, of course it is. Okay, so here is the finished look with a coat of mascara. I just think it's so pretty. I did have a lot of fallout under my eyes, so bear that in mind. If you're a fallout hater, I don't really care about it, but there was a fair amount. And I think most of it came from the lilac shade, but the rest of it wasn't too bad. And maybe a bit actually from the sort of white, like pearlescent, shade as well. Those were the two that kind of, I think, had the most fallout on my cheeks and under eye area, but I think this is super pretty. I will insert the finished look with full face of makeup so you can see how it looks with everything finished. Okay, so my thoughts on this quad. I think ultimately it's clearly just not going to be for everybody, but I really like it, okay? It definitely doesn't have that usual creamy, buttery sort of satin formula or the super impactful off the scale shimmer and sparkle or the intense pigment that we're used to from Pat McGrath when you compare it to something like the Voyeuristic Fixin, those Italian formulas are definitely superior when it comes to pigmentation, when it comes to the amount of sparkle and the impact. They are definitely a more impressive formula in her usual quads her more expensive italian made palettes definitely have more pigmentation more impact more 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 of everything but that being said i do like this quad i'm really happy with it and i will use it i really like the look that i got today even though it's not a look i expected to like because i wanted to use all four shadows just to show you them all together and i thought this isn't going to be for me it's going to be too colorful but i I ended up really enjoying it and really being happy with it and thinking it's super pretty. If you're expecting this level of quality, you may be disappointed. But I think if you sort of take it on face value for what you get, you can really enjoy it if you're drawn to this color story. I do. I do understand people's disappointment that they wanted something more in line with her Italian formula, her usual quads. Maybe the packaging is disappointing for you. But I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna get a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's definitely something different from my, that I have in my collection as far as the color story. And I don't know if people think that I won't say anything against Pat McGrath. If, if you are thinking that, just know I made a whole video slandering her. 
not that long ago, not slandering her because actually it was all true. Um, but talking about the customer service from the brand. So you could say that I'm not the hugest fan as far as their customer service, I would tell you if I felt differently. I don't think the formulas are bad. I do think they are inferior to her Italian formula, but because that gave us a softer, less intimidating, intimidating pigmentation, for me, it actually worked better for me, being a really colorful palette, because I am afraid of color, and it made it more wearable, more user-friendly, maybe more beginner-friendly or color, phobe friendly for me so it works for me i enjoy it i'm really happy with the look that i got today i think it's just the ultimate case of each to their own <laughs> it's either going to be for you or it's not and both opinions are absolutely fine so there you have it those are all of my thoughts on the super controversial opalescent orchid palette from Pat McGrath. Please let me know. Did you pick it up? Are you disappointed? Are you happy with it? Are you enjoying it? Do you love it? Is it just not for you? Please let us know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye 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 bye.